this week, this holy week, I meant to start off on Monday night with centering prayer here at the church. And, you know, I imagined that my week would go a certain way. I imagined a kind of starkness, silence. I imagined my week filled with meditation. I even imagined I'd be at the Stations of the Cross earlier today. But instead, life erupted in various ways. Today, I had to follow up a baby, a newborn, who had jaundice. Since our office was closed, I had to work around that, and it interfered with me coming to church. And, you know, I was not too excited about having my plans disrupted. On Monday, I gave a eulogy for a longtime patient of mine. Her family had asked me on Friday because my patient, she thought of me not just as a doctor, but as a friend, they said. And she wanted me to speak at her funeral. And during the week, I became worried about various things, things that I felt like I shouldn't have been worried about. Do you ever, do you ever worry about things that you shouldn't worry about? So when I sat down to write this sermon, I thought, you know, man, I have got to make this good. One of my best, because the bishop will be here. And when I gave the eulogy on Monday, I thought to myself, man, I've got to make this good. I hope her family will be pleased with what I say, and maybe even a little impressed. It's amazing, I think, how my ego has made a tremendous appearance this week. And, you know, I was talking to Marge about this earlier today, and she told me about a young person who recently died after a long bout with cancer. And about how this person's mom had written reflections and posts of her treatment and hospice course. Marge would read them to me now and again. And I thought again about the things that I worry about. And I thought after that about Ron Webster, who also died this week. He was one of the first people from the parish to come to the Centering Prayer Group many years ago here at Good Shepherd. And I thought about the day I last saw him and about his dying. And I th thought about Roz, who cared for him during this time. I thought about Ron and his enthusiasm, which means, by the way, the word enthusiasm, infused by God. The, Ron's enthusiasm for the things and ministries I saw him do. And I know, I know that that enthusiasm and that passion could carry him away sometimes and maybe even get him into a little bit of trouble. <laughs> but there was a good side to that passion, to that enthusiasm. And I got to witness that. And I'll miss him. But then, you know, I thought again about myself. It's amazing how our minds love to come back to ourselves. Now, I'll tell you, when I was talking to Marge and lamenting, Marge didn't just tell me about that young person who died of cancer. She told me, this is really what she said. She said, now, Rick, you don't have to get down on yourself about those kinds of thoughts about yourself. They're natural, a natural part of how we humans are. And I know she didn't use exactly those words, but I did preach to her this sermon earlier today, and she said it was pretty faithful. And I thought after she said that to me, you know, she's right. And if someone else told me they were having scruples, feeling embarrassed about their ego, I would say the same thing to them that Marge said to me. It's okay. It's natural. Give yourself a little compassion. So why am I telling you all this tonight on this Good Friday when we meditate on the passion and death of Jesus Christ? When we hear the narrative from John's Gospel? You might imagine that I'm telling you this to tell you about how the crucified God teaches us how to crucify our own egos. And maybe there is a sermon somewhere in me about that. But today, I'm telling you all this because I think that the drama that we hear, the drama of the passion, is the drama of God who refused to abandon us to our egoism and our violence and our suffering, who refused to abandon his own creation but instead chose compassion, chose to embrace and become and walk among God's own. 
Not many emotions are left out of the gospel and out of the passion narrative. There's the joy of the wedding feast at Cana and the joy of the sweet smell of the nard oil that Mary anoints Jesus' feet with. Yes, there is hypocrisy and arrogance. There is shame. What is truth, sniffs Pilate. And there is sadness, of course, and there is grief. There is fear and there is love. There is humility. There is violence and much more. God, I think, embraces all this in the cross. All comes together in the cross. Not just all of Jesus' life, which had led up to this moment, but all of the universe comes, as Teilhard de Chardin said, to be on the cross. All is being offered. Our sadness and our joy. Our egoism and our service. Our enthusiasm and our sacrifice. Our fears and our hopes. The births of the smallest babies and the births of the greatest of stars. When we adore the cross tonight, let us adore and be grateful. But not just for what God has done for you. Be grateful for life, your life, and all its imperfections and errors and triumphs and joys. For that is what God chose to become and what comes together at last on the cross. And that is also what will rise. Amen.